This video is hopefully going to simplify the Apollo docking system and make it easy to understand. I've read a lot of NASA documentation on the subject, but couldn't find many animations to show the actual system in operation. Now the probe and drug docking system was approved over many other concepts back in 1963, mainly because it had the least weight penalty. The final configuration of the Apollo docking system consists of the lunar module tunnel ring and hatch, the drug assembly, probe assembly, the command module docking ring and automatic ring latches, and finally the command module forward hatch. The docking ring is bolted to the command module and serves as the mounting structure for the docking latches the electrical connections and the two seals that allow pressurization of the dock command module and lunar module tunnel area. The drug assembly is a truncated cone structure that is installed in the lunar module tunnel and serves as the guide and the receiver for the probe head. The drug consists of one inch thick aluminium honeycomb sandwiched between aluminium face sheets, three main support beams and six stringers. Drug mountain lugs are part of the main support beams and mate with drug mountain pads in the lunar module tunnel. One of the drug pads contains a latching mechanism that provides rotational constraint and can be actuated by the crewman during installation or removal of the drug from either the command module or the lunar module side of the transfer tunnel. That's the background on the actual equipment so I'm now going to show the sequence of events and how the docking system actually works. Prior to flight, the ground crew places each of the 12 latches in the cock position by two pull strokes of the latch handle. When the spacecraft is in Earth's orbit, the crew extends the docking probe in preparation for docking with the lunar module and Saturn booster during translunar flight. The actual docking manoeuvre occurs shortly after translunar ejection and begins with separation of the command service module from the S4B. Once the command module is free, a maneuver is executed to align the command module and lunar module docking ports in preparation for docking. The pilot aligns the image superimposed on the optical site with the target site situated on the lunar module. The crew then initiates a closing velocity so that the probe head contacts and engages with the drug. You can see here the probe capture latch assembly protrude through the drug and engage the three latches. The crew observes an indicator to confirm capture latch engagement prior to initiating the probe retract system to pull both spacecraft together. The crew initiates the retract command which then pulls the docking ring and lunar module tunnel together. Now the 12 docking ring latches are automatically actuated when the lunar module tunnel ring depresses a trigger on each of the latches. As the tunnel depresses the latch trigger, the hook and handle are released and this allows them to rotate to a position where the hook is over the docking ring lip. Ring latch engagement provides a pressure tight, structurally rigid connection between the spacecraft to allow crew ingress. The tunnel and the lunar module are pressurised by opening a valve and the command module forward hatch. One crewman then removes the forward hatch verifies engagement of the 12 latches, connects the electrical umbilical, verifies engagement of the probe extend latch, vents the gas from the probe retract system and reinstalls the forward hatch. The lunar module is then separated and the dock spacecraft continue their journey to the moon.
Now prior to the spacecraft entering into lunar orbit, the crew must enter the lunar module. The probe and the drug must all be removed. The probe consists of a manual capture release handle which detaches the probe head and has a ratchet assembly for probe removal. After the lunar module checkout activity is completed, the two crewmen re-enter the command module and the removed hardware is reinstalled in the tunnel, but is not electrically connected. In preparation for lunar descent, the hardware is removed again and the two astronauts enter the lunar module. The probe and drug are then reinstalled. This time, however, the drug is reinstalled from the lunar module side. The probe is preloaded to 6,000 pounds of tension to allow the subsequent unlatching of the 12 docking ring latches and to maintain tunnel pressurization. The forward hatch is then installed. The lunar module is then able to undock and land on the moon. On return from the moon, the docking procedure is carried out again. This time, the lunar module pilot can also align the lunar module by aligning it with a lit target in the command module window. The docking procedure and capture happens in the same order as previously carried out. When it's finally time to separate the two spacecraft permanently, all the equipment is passed into the lunar module, both hatches are then secured. This time however, the final separation of the docking ring is accomplished by a pyrotechnic initiation of an MDF. That's a mild detonating fuse. This explosively severs the ring structure. And that's it. The lunar module would decay in its orbit and eventually crash onto the moon's surface. The only one to survive is Apollo 10's lunar module, which was called Snoopy. This is currently in orbit around the Sun and is due to pass 4 million miles from Earth on July the 10th, 2037. Get your telescopes out. <laughs>